I'm Sean Schaus, agricultural engineer in Southwest Iowa for Iowa State University Extension and Outreach. We're going to talk a little bit about what we want manure applicators to know about grassed waterways. So why talk about grassed waterways if you're a manure applicator? Isn't that just a landowner and a farmer issue? Well, consider this. When you're operating equipment next to the waterway, you could cause damage to the waterway, or you could cause a harm to the effectiveness of the waterway, and in so doing, you might contribute to additional water pollution from the water moving down that waterway. So let's talk a little bit about the function of waterways. The grass waterway is there to safely carry water off of the field and down that waterway, and at the same time preventing gully erosion as that water moves. Now, Different from a grass filter strip, the waterway is not there to trap sediment, it's not there to filter that water, and it's not there to infiltrate or soak up the water as it moves. Grass waterways are designed specifically to carry water, so they're built with a cross section that's made to get the water off of the field and into the waterway, and then to move that water in a lower central portion of the waterway and get it off the field. Grass waterways can fail if the sediment moves off of the field and builds up in that grass waterway in the lower portion, or they can fail if wheel tracks follow parallel to the waterway, or even the crop rows themselves are planted parallel to the waterway. They can also fail if the grass cover is not maintained in that grass waterway. In any of these locations, then, as water moves down those flow paths of unprotected soil, it can cause erosion along the waterway or in the waterway. So you may see these gullies forming inside the waterway or outside the waterway. And this is a scene all too frequent that we see in Iowa along grassed waterways. So what do we need to do to maintain these waterways? Number one, they need to be inspected yearly. And more than that, they need to be inspected after every heavy rainfall event to look for signs of these maintenance issues. The grass in that waterway has to be maintained, and the shape of the waterway has to be maintained. So anytime you see gullies forming, you need to be out there and repairing those gullies. If there's silt accumulating, it needs to be removed. If there are any obstructions in that waterway, things like trees or even hay bales left in the waterway, they could obstruct the flow of water. They need to be taken out of the waterway to keep that flow path in good shape. The grass needs to be maintained. That could mean controlling weeds and trees in the grass waterway. Could mean fertilizing periodically to keep that grass in good condition. And being cautious about spray drift or sprayers crossing the waterway. We don't want to kill any of that grass that's in the waterway. Mowing is helpful for maintaining the quality of the grass stand in the waterway, but if you're mowing, make sure that you're doing that before May 15th or after August 1st to avoid primary bird nesting season. Traffic patterns are also important around those waterways. We don't want to plant or till parallel to that waterway because that can encourage water to move outside the waterway parallel to it. When you're crossing the waterway, you want to cross perpendicular to the waterway or on the contour so that you're encouraging water to move from the field into the grassed waterway. You want to limit it, traffic along those waterways, particularly when they're wet and soft, just stay off the waterway so you're not tearing it up with vehicle traffic. And don't use the waterway or the area right next to it as a driveway to get from one part of the field to another. If you're looking at the bottom end of that waterway, we want to use control structures there to prevent erosion at the outlet point of the waterway. And, of course, in the field itself, manage the erosion of soil in that field so you're not adding an unnecessary amount of silt and sediment to the grass waterways. Sorry about the terminology jargon there, calling that a, an outlet structure. Here's what I'm talking about when I say outlet structures. Uh, these are built at the end of a waterway or any place that the water level has to drop suddenly. Most commonly, you'll see these where the waterway empties into a road ditch 
or where the waterway has a drop from a higher level of the field to a lower level in the field. Here are examples showing the outlet structure when it's empty and one that's full of flowing water. These are out there so that that flowing water when it makes that sudden drop doesn't start eroding a gully back upstream in that waterway. So what do we want manure applicators specifically to think about when they're working around grass waterways? Number one, just stay off them when they're too soft to support vehicle traffic. Don't make ruts parallel to that waterway either. So when you're working close to that waterway or need to cross the waterway, it's best to cross it on the contour or perpendicular to the waterway so that any ruts that are made are still getting the water inside the waterway. Now, if that's not possible, uh, if ruts are made, you know, despite your best efforts, at the very least then notify the landowner that the ruts have been made so they can get out there after the manure application and do any corrective measures that are needed to correct those ruts. Also, if you are using uh, an applicator and crossing that waterway, it's best to stop the application of manure as you cross the waterway. Uh, if you're using a programmed system or manual shutoffs, just go ahead and time that application so you don't apply in the waterway unless that year's uh, maintenance calls for fertilizer application in the waterway. This is a good practice even if it's not required by setback distance rules or by the manure management plan. It's just best not to have excessive nutrients laying in that flow path if it's not required that year. And don't use the waterway as a driveway to get from one part of the field to the next part of the field. That extra traffic is going to be hard on the grass stand when it's dry, and it could cause ruts if the waterway is soft. If you're using the GPS system in the field for application, when you're out there mapping the edges of those waterways, it's best to do that if you can when the field is dry, so you're not causing excessive tracks and ruts. If you can't do it when it's dry, then consider using a lighter weight vehicle to do that mapping, something that's not going to cause the ruts that a heavy applicator would. Or if you have to do it with the application equipment, at least think about doing it with the equipment empty or when it's only partially loaded rather than with a full load of manure. And always don't use that waterway as a staging area, a loading area, or a stockpile area for the manure. Remember, stockpiling rules specifically prohibit having piles of manure in a grassed waterway flow area. Similarly, watch out for this. Sometimes a grass waterway can become uh, actually a water source. Remember those definitions in the rules. If there is a bed and banks in the bottom of that waterway, or even just a permanent eroded channel in the bottom of the waterway, it could be a water source, a stream by legal definitions, rather than a waterway, and there are separation distance rules then that would apply. So, a summary for manure applicators. Uh, we want you to remember that you have a role to play out there. That grass waterway is there to safely carry water off of the field and to move it down the hill without causing gully erosion. We don't want you to do anything out there that would compromise the function of that waterway or pollute that water as it moves. You're out there playing a role in this. Be careful with what you do.